Let me tell you something. It's really simple. The Lord wants you to press in and you press in past all the things that would hinder you. You'll receive everything that he's already freely supplied. People think that sometimes I think people think that they got to holler, they got to yell, they got to scream, move around, whatever. No, all you got to do is engage, stay with it till heaven comes. All you got to do is just engage in what the Holy Ghost is doing. Because I watch people, I watch people just, they'll just pray just a little while and then they'll stop. I don't know why you would do that. I mean, I, I only reason I could know that you would stop praying and worship and praising God is because now you're so overwhelmed with the manifest power of God, you can't hardly move. But I mean, to just start, you know, just a little prayer and then just stop short of anything happening in, in, in God is just, re I mean, that's religious. That's religious. It's meaningless. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. I mean, don't do it in any dimension of your life. I would say, don't practice religion anywhere. Well, you could practice religion for the widows and the orphans. Okay? That'd be pure and undefiled religion. Okay? You could take care of the widows and, and you know, the orphans, uh, James said. But otherwise, I would go into relationship. You know, I'm not going to sit down at, at, and even pray over food without literally talking to the Father and expecting that, that that communication realm that I have in relationship is being engaged in. I'm not going to speak into the air. You with me? Let's just, don't practice speaking into the air. Don't practice just doing some kind of religious thing. I want to encourage you, dear people, this is a day, an hour, an opportunity. God is looking for people who are willing to be used by Him. If you're willing to be used by Him, then you're going to have to act like it. If you're willing to be used by Him, then you're going to have to be willing to engage into a place where the Holy Spirit can, can, can train you and teach you to be able to move in the realms of God. You must understand this now. Now that begins with you locking into prayer. Don't just sit there. You're not a Buddhist. You're just sitting there. Don't do that. That's practicing the wrong thing here. You with me? And uh, engage. Engage. You say, well, I don't really feel anything. Hang on, you will. Hang on, you will. If you practice, if you practice coming to God, they that come to God must believe that He is and that He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Therefore, if your practice is that you begin to talk with God, knowing that He is there and knowing that He is going to answer, you're going to have what you believe for. You're going to get it. It's going to happen because that's God's divine purpose. Now, if you practice just stopping short of that, you're building on the wrong foundation. That ain't going to work out for you. Okay? If you're just going to sit there, okay, and uh, as the country pr preacher said, and act like you're pison, okay, or poison, but I think that is a better thing to say, poison, and because uh, it means a couple different things. Then you're not going to have anything. We can come around you, we can camp around you, and everybody that is anointed on the planet, I get on the phone, call them up, have them come translate in right now. Lay hands on you, nothing will happen to you. Why? Because it is a function of your will. Can you imagine having about five or six great preachers of God translated, boom, right here, right now. Uh huh? You think, oh, well, I'll get excited. No, you won't. It would just be a temporal one anyways. I mean, you know, when it comes to the fact of how you're going to hook up with God, that is something that happens between you and Him. Nobody else is in it. <laughs> Nobody else is in it. I said no one else is in it. It's you and God. And we want you to get in it. We want you to get in it to win it. In Jesus' name. And when you start, don't stop till you touch heaven. And when you start praising, don't stop till you touch heaven. Huh. 
And when you start singing, don't stop till you touch heaven. Hallelujah. And when you start shouting, don't stop till you touch heaven. Don't stop. I don't care. Don't stop for nothing. Don't stop.
we begin to talk to the Lord, we begin to ask Him things like this. We actually pray and ask Him according to His will. Now all we have to do is participate and we receive everything that He's purposed to give us and more than what we ask. The Lord has simply said to us, to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, one that is holy and acceptable unto Him, which is our reasonable service. On the altar, when an, when an offering was given to God that was holy and acceptable unto Him, His fire came and consumed it. His presence, His glory came and consumed it. It didn't speak, it didn't speak of a, grand, a divine barbecue. It spoke of that which God would do through our lives, a testimony to us, if our hearts are right and sincere with God and we're participating with Him. And so what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna have, what I'm gonna have you do is, uh, uh, Kelly, come grab this offering basket right here. And I, I want you to do this, I want you to stand right here because We've got some things we're going to get done here in the kingdom. Just stand right there and hold the basket. Now what I want you to do is I want you to prepare an offering of your finances that represents your heart towards God right now. Everybody wants you to prepare an offering. I guess people are filing out because their wallets are outside. Remember, bring your wallet to church with you. You know what I'm saying? Your wallet and your heart are connected. God said so, so it's true. I want you to get ready. Well, I want you to get ready with an offering. I'm going to tell you right now, you listen to me. Father has given us a divine opportunity. He's given us a divine opportunity that has one of the greatest signs and wonders and miracles to back it up right now that you probably have ever witnessed. And if you can't get your head wrapped around it, you can just open up that panel right there, walk into that room and look. Father has given us an opportunity to go out. Right now, Father is on the move to bring a great shaking to the United States of America. Father is on the move to bring a great shaking to this place called San Diego. And some people are going to have to sacrifice their lives. To no longer live for themselves, but to live for the one who bought us. Who paid an incredible offering. Somebody said, I... Right, yeah, it sounds like it costs something. Well, ask God about cost something. Yeah. Ask God about a price to pay, a payment to make. And he paid it all, praise God. He did, he paid it all. But I want you to, I want you to prepare an offering unto the Lord because you want to participate. I want you to prepare an offering unto the Lord and as you get it prepared, I just want you to come and worship. Just in your heart, just come on and worship. Come worship right here in this. Bring your offering right here and put it, place it here in this basket. Just come worship. Just believe in God that His fire is going to fall upon you. Fire is going to fall upon your finances. Fire is going to fall upon every dimension of your life. Fire is going to fall upon your life. Fire of God. You're going to be more of a vital perp. You're going to be, have a more of a vital impact. You're going to have a more of a vital effect upon what's taking place right now in the kingdom of God. Father's got a divine strategy. It's happening right now. Things are taking place in the kingdom of God all over the world for, with those who, who are willing to participate with God or are willing to throw it all in and not hold anything back. I'm telling you, there's a miracle in the house. There's a miracle in the house for breakthrough spiritually. There's a miracle in the house for a breakthrough financially. There's a miracle in the house for a breakthrough for whatever you have need of. Do not withhold. Do not withhold. You're going to withhold. Pick another night, not tonight. Don't withhold tonight. You're going to have to, if you're going to withhold, plan another night. Don't plan it tonight. Don't do it tonight. Don't do it tonight. (laughs) 
Now, 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 Kelly, go set that one over there on that side. Just put up on the platform. Now go over here and pick up this one. Now, some of you may not know what's going on. Now comes Van back up here. Some of you may not what's, know what's going on. But when, first of all, when there is a hindrance, when there is a power of darkness standing in the way, trying to prevent your access to what God has promised, that one belongs over there. When the enemy is standing in the way, trying to block, block your access, what you do is you begin to give. I'm going to tell you something. If you will decide to die, that when you begin to pray, you don't stop praying until heaven touches you. You'll begin to build upon a foundation where God can use you. Everybody that has ever been used, God used them out of the relationship that they had already developed and established with Him. God never picked up anybody and used them outside of a relationship. They were always used in context to the relationship. And I'm talking about a breakthrough. Is that one for the other offering right over there? Huh? That one's for that offering is right there. We got another offering getting ready to come up, but I haven't told anybody about it yet. That's why I know the one that you're, that you're sowing into has got to be over that way. I've got two of my friends right now getting ready to do, a, do some major events. One of them, I'm going to let, and we're going to, because he's, it's, it's a little bit further out, I'm going to wait in, in, until that. I'm going to wait on that one because we're going to sow into that. It's a crusade in Mexico. Because if you want, if you, first of all, God has commissioned every one of us to go. He's for, for, commissioned for every one of us to lay down our life. But if you're not willing to go and if you're not willing to lay down your life, if you're not willing to be obedient, nothing's going to ever happen. You're going to be stuck. And we don't want any. I'm not going to I'm not going to stand around here and let people see, watch people be religious, get more excited about basketball than Jesus or more excited about whatever else than, than the power and the things of God. I'm not, not, I'm, not having to do, I'm not having anything to do with that religious nonsense. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I know. I know about sowing in your whole life into something. My dear friend, who I love very, very dearly, who God has used in a radical way in this nation, is about ready to launch a campaign on D.C. And I woke up the other morning, the Lord woke me up early in the morning, and I was praying for him and his wife, Adonica. And the Spirit of the Lord just laid on my heart about receiving an offering for them tonight. For D.C. This is for D.C. In July, a campaign is going to be launched that's focused upon Congress and the Senate. It's Holy Ghost meetings that are going to run for about three weeks. And we going, many of us from this church will converge upon that that ground in a connection of divine faith that something's going to bust loose see I don't know anybody else who carries an anointing of the Holy Ghost that has gotten this plan from God except for my dear friend Rodney and I guarantee you I'm in it with him and I already I've already sent an off but I'm not going to leave you out because the bottom line of it is I want to see this region shaken by the power of God and it isn't going to happen until you and I get a bigger anointing. There has to be a bigger anointing. And I know how it happens. I know that, I know that a bigger anointing is going to shake D.C. because there's a bunch of preachers like me that are hooking up with someone who has the point on that and that connection of faith is going to is going to shake the place 
Well, right here, I can bring it down to a local level. You're going to have to have a realm of faith where you hook up with the point man right here and say, we're going to do this thing. We understand that prevailing prayer makes it happen. See, when you stop prioritizing God and acting like that somehow your self-interest are more important than his interest, things, but the dynamic of your atmosphere begins to change. The dynamics of your life begin to change. And this is what we want for you because it's the most amazing life that you possibly can live. And it ain't going to happen unless you know how to connect. And one of the ways that we get to connect is with our giving, with our finances. There's a connection that goes on when it's done with a sincere and honest and true heart. When you withhold, you, you recluse under the, under, the, under the realm of your own interest. Don't do that. Don't do that. It ain't going to work out for you. In fact, God said, God likened it to idolatry. He said, you can't serve God and mammon too. Somebody said, well, I got the mortgage. I got this payment, that payment, the other payment. That is, that's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. If God gave you that, it's not, those things aren't going to keep your heart from being full on for God in the kingdom of God. Now, if God didn't give that to you and it's turning your heart away from obeying God, then you need to get that out of your life or you need to reprioritize it. You understand what I'm telling you? I'm telling you the truth. I'm speaking to you the truth in Christ Jesus. I want you to get this. Hallelujah. The beautiful thing of it is when you get it, it is an exciting adventure because then what happens is you find God, you find a realm of divine provision that you knew nothing about. You find a realm of divine grace that you knew nothing about. I can take you and show you probably a line of people who are begrudging the things that they did in the kingdom and they'll talk about the losses that they have. I'll take you and show you a million times more that'll talk about the gains. Those are talking about the losses. They never moved forward in anything. They never accomplished anything. They went from one problem to the next problem. Those who poured it all in on God, I'm telling you right now, He blessed them and He gave the seed to the sower so that they could give more. And I'm telling you, there, there's an advancement of the kingdom of God going on in their life. This is what we want for you. We cannot run the risk of having such a moment and such an opportunity as this. As this. As to be right at the very heart and center of divine strategy to reach this region and miss out. We can't be this close and miss out. God, I gotta miss out. Uh-uh. 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 So right now, I want you to prepare an offering for DC. This is about preaching to Congress. This is about preaching to the Senate. This is about going after government. It's like, it's like at the very center of the meetings is the White House, the Oval Office, the Senate, the Congress. And furthermore, in your praying, I want you to begin to cry out to God and pray specifically, specifically for these things, even as you're praying for revival right here in this place. It's about hooking up. People want to do it their own, go of their own, have their own imagination, have their own thought, have their own ideas about things. But I'm going to tell you right now, that will not profit you. You will not go forward. You will not be, at the, you will not be in the center of the Father's will. But when you hook up, you cannot lose. When you hook up, it, it's not possible for you to be anywhere other than right where God's ordained and purposed you to be. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. So I want everybody to get an offering ready. To re get an offering that represents what you want to see God do in, in, in Congress. What you want to see God do in the Senate. The chaplain, the chaplain of the Congress will be preaching in the meetings. So senators that know the Lord will be testifying in the meetings. But bigger than that, there's going to be a bunch of people gathered around crying out to God for the fire of God to fall upon our government. For a shaking to come upon our government. We are looking at this event. We have got our faith focused on this event. We've had our faith focused on this event for a number of months now. We are very, very passionate about what we believe God is going to do. And we're not looking to a man. We're not looking to any specific anointing of a man. We just, we have a dear friend who God used in a wonderful way who's taken point on this. And God has brought around a lot of champions who are saying, yeah, let's do this. It's now or never. 
And for us, it's just that critical. And if for you, it's not that critical, then you are completely checked out of reality. I'll just tell you right now, you come checked out of reality. So I want you to get check in. If you're checked out, the good news, you can check in right now. Just check in, check back in. Let the lights come back on. Oh, thou the sleepest, awake, arise, and God will give you revelation. Amen. So I want you to get an offering ready right now. I want you to get an offering ready right now. So I said, well, I can't afford it. No, you can't afford not to. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to understand, we've discovered that God is a God full of blessings. God is a God full of provision for every dimension of our life. And he lavishly displayed it when he sent his only begotten son and said, this is the price that I will pay for your sins. This is how much you mean to me. This is what I'm willing to give to have you. This is what I'm willing to give to advance my purpose and my cause in your life. Hallelujah. Isn't that radical? What a great God. What an, what an amazing God. What an amazing God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. So for D.C., for the government, for the White House, for the Senate, for the Congress, for a great shaking in, 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 in the federal government, in every dimension of the federal government, we're calling for the fire of God to fall upon the, uh, the IRS. We're calling the, Father of God, the fire of God to call upon the Federal Reserve. We're calling God's fire to fall upon Congress legislation. We're, fall, we're crying out, God, let your fire fall upon the Senate. Oh God, we're crying out, let your fire fall, oh God, upon everybody who takes a stand to make any decision about what we're going to do in this land. That's what we're believing God for. Change. We're believing God for another Independence Day. <laughs> we're believing God for another Independence Day. <laughs> A liberation from the powers of darkness that have tried to take hold this nation. And change the laws. And change what we believe, and what we value in God and in the kingdom. This offering is for DC. Amen. Amen. Just bring it, come worship God with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, for DC. For DC in Jesus' name. 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 Father, we thank you for shaking the White House. We thank you, oh God, for shaking the Senate, for shaking the Congress, oh God, for shaking the governmental powers, the Federal Reserve, the IRS, every other interest. In Jesus' name. Let's just pray with me for a minute. Thank 
Father, we pray. We pray especially, God, that your anointing, Father, that the miracle power of things that, that are, are thought impossible that only you can do will especially fall on the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Father, we cry out to you. Father, in your mercy, do that which men think is impossible, oh God. Father, we cry out to you right now. Shake that place. Shake every courthouse. Every judicial power. Every seat of judgment in this nation. Shake it. Let your voice be heard louder than any other voice. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Let your voice be heard, Father, louder than any other voice. Oh, God, in this nation, I pray in Jesus' name. Just pray with me just a few more minutes. Father, we pray, oh God, that every church, that every person who knows how to pray, that every minister of yours, oh God, would understand the urgency of the hour. Oh, they'll understand, oh God, the course of events, the time that is at hand. Oh, Father, the prayers of the saints will be joined together over all the nation. Oh, God, over every state, over every city, over every town, over every assembly. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Manga bakara ngeri de Victor mama mama manina shekaya koko kene na katika dokupaya. Now, what I want to do is very important to me. Whoever is taking care of the offerings is very important for, to me that I see you mark the things because I don't believe that you are allowed to convolute the offering. You can't dilute or convolute the offering. When you give and when you pledge to give something, the offering is sacred, it's holy. You got a big blessing in there, I'm telling you right now. I can tell you how Father feels about it. You can watch every offering from the widow's two mites to the woman with the alabaster box to Ananias and Sapphira's foul offering, lying offering. And you can see from the blessing to the curse how Father feels about it. Something to tremble over. It's sacred. It represents something that we can't even begin to, we can't really even begin to, to, to consider the reality of what it is. We can't even really begin to put it into words. That means play. Now I want you to play. I want you to play a song. You can play a song. We're getting people trained. You know, we're getting, God's getting his troops organized. Everybody knows how to, knows what it is they're responsible to do and knows how to do it. Praise God. Everybody knows how to take their part, take their place, proper place in the kingdom of God. And people aren't thrusting one against another. People aren't running around one, trying to figure out what it is they're supposed to be doing. Everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing. Everybody's got their part. Everybody's responsible to show up and do what it is God said to do. Hallelujah. And at a moment, at a moment, in a moment, and just a glance, just to, just to, just to guide you with his eyes. That's what he said to do. He guide you with his eyes. He'd like look at you and go do that, and that means you're supposed to go over there. Hallelujah! You watching him as a servant and watches the Lord. You ready to move? You're not doing your own thing. You're not seeking your own way. Dear people, you see, this is the day. This is the day. I'm going to talk to you tonight about. The time that it is short. And I want you to get ready. I want you to prepare your heart. I want you to be, I want you to be willing to consecrate yourself today, tonight, to do things differently from now on. Where you go out of this place tonight and it will be impossible for you to continue on doing things the way you've done them. That you will not go back 
to the way you've been living. Because there's no advancement there. If there were advancement there, you'd already be where God wants you to be. Is that, is that simple enough to understand? Should be simple enough to understand. Hallelujah. Because no man stands in your way. I don't care who they are. No man stands in your way. When God sees the work of grace happening in your life that needs to be taking place, he knows where you are. Well, he'll put you where you need to be. Amen. He'll order your steps because that's what he's promised to do. I want you to mark the offering. That offering right there today, I want you to take care of it. That offering right there. That offering right there is very important to me. That offering right there in its entirety goes to D.C. That represents the way I feel about what I want God to do in the, in, in the United States of America. That represents what I want to see God do in the Supreme Court. That represents what I want to see God do. I mean, if he would undervalue what the, the meaning of that, then undervalue the meaning of it. You don't undervalue the meaning of it when it comes to your food. Many people don't undervalue the meaning of it when it comes to a place to sleep. Huh? But they do undervalue the meaning of it, which is far greater when it comes to how Father looks at it and says, oh, is that where your heart's at? You're willing to do that for me? You're willing to take the things that are precious to you and give them to me, Father says. You don't think he's going to respond to that? Go read the Bible again. He's going to respond to that. That represents how we feel what we want God to do once again in the Senate. Before the turn of the century, before 18, in the late eight, up until the late eight, 1800s, they were still having church on Sunday morning in Congress. There, there nobody didn't know. It was before they realized that you weren't supposed to have church and you know church and state mixed together. They didn't figure that out till just about 1970, 1980s, when they finally suddenly discovered that somewhere in the Constitution. <laughs> you know. And then they come surprised, try to make us think, we, they, they act like we don't know anything, try to make us believe something different, you know, about how it was. No, we know how it was. We see what the, we see what the church has been doing. Most of the leaders, most of the first leaders in the United States of America were preachers and just preachers. Hallelujah. They led in the, ref they led in the, the formation of the, of the government of the United States of America. And we believe in God for earth-shaking, land-shaking, government-shaking, Holy Ghost-shaking, <laughs> moving of the Spirit. You know, you got to understand something. I don't want to sing a song for the sake of singing song. I can't take it. It don't work for me. It has to be worship. I got to feel that I got to feel that people are talking to God, that they're offering the heart to God. It ain't about performance. Um, and, just, and you can stand there and just say, Jesus, 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 oh, Lord Jesus, oh, hallelujah, oh, praise God. And that's going to be beautiful. As long as it's coming out of your heart. Oh, mama, 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 mama. So as we, just, as we get ready to join in the song, we just want you to sing. We want you to sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord with your heart. Let it be a prayer that you pray. Let it be a request that you're making. Let it be let something that you're asking God to do right now. This is something that you cannot live without. You, you're more hungry for the move of God than you've ever been. You're more thirsty for the things of the Spirit than you've ever been. You, you cannot wait or delay anymore to see those things which God's promised to do through your life. In Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Oh, riba ma ma si re mi ma me no. Just lift up your voice and shout to the Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Blessings and honor and power to you, Lord. Oh, blessings, all honor, all power and dominion to you, Lord. Say it with me. All blessings, all honor, all power and dominion to you, Lord. Most high, all blessings, all honor, all power and dominion to you, Lord. All blessings, all honor, all power and dominion to you, Lord. All blessings, all honor, all power and dominion to you. Lord, now and forevermore, all blessings, all honor, all power and dominion to you, Lord, both now and forever. All blessings, all honor, all power and dominion to you, Lord, now and forever. All blessings, all honor. All power and dominion to you, Lord, both now and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. All oh, blessings, all oh, blessings, all oh, power, honor and dominion to you, Lord, now and forever. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody shout hallelujah. Come praise him now. Come praise him now. Come praise him. Come praise him now. Come praise him. 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 
Come praise Him. Mama, come praise Him. Praise Him. Come praise Him. So come praise Him. 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 Come Come praise Him. 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 Sorry, mama, mama, baby, mama, nigga, baby, mama, do it. Come praise Him. Come praise Him. Praise Him. Loud Him, all ye saints. Praise Him. Praise Him. Loud Him, all ye saints. Praise Him. Praise Him. Loud him all you saints, come praise him, praise him, praise the Lord. Yeah, praise the Lord. Go oh, shout, lift up your voice and shout. <laughs> shout, lift up your voice and shout. Praise him, ha, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise, come praise him, praise the Lord, oh, praise Everybody come praise 
the Lord. Everybody come pray. The Lord. Oh, I will praise the Lord. Oh, I will praise the Lord. Yes, I will praise the Everybody come pray the Lord. Yes, I will pray the Lord. Oh, everybody come pray. The Lord, yes, I will pray. The Lord. Now, let me just say, just live like this, and there is absolutely no way that the enemy would be able to touch you. You'll live in joy all day. You'll live in peace all day. You'll live in the joy all day. You'll live in the goodness of God and the good things of God will be yours. You'll have great boldness in the faith. You'll be able to call things into existence. No longer will you be held back by circumstances or situations that would oppose you. Those things that have threatened you in the past would not be able to threaten you now. Those things that have intimidated you would have absolutely no meaning, no value. The only thing that would be valuable to you is the voice of God and the will of God and things His Father has proclaimed from heaven. You'd just do them. Hallelujah. Everything else would have to come into a line and come into agreement with whatever you had talked to Father about and whatever Father had commissioned you to do. There'd be nothing to be able to stop you. Nothing would be impossible for you. So I pray in Jesus' name you live the rest of your life like this. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated. I'm going to spend some time talking to you today, tonight, because this is a strategic moment in time. I really wish that no one would leave. The information I have is extremely valuable. If you have to go, hurry back. But the information I have is extremely valuable. You can't miss out on this. It's very important. Those of you that need to run to the restroom all the time, you surely don't want to get in the car and go anywhere with me. My tank and my gas tank goes for about a little over four hours, and I mean to get where I'm going. And so, you know, I pray tonight that you recognize that I mean to get where I'm going. I have a destination in God. I have a divine purpose. I have a divine call. We know that if we, with an honest and sincere heart, continue to go after the things that Father has set us to do, then we will bring forth the fruit of it with patience. Amen. So you inherit the, pray, the promise with patience. And there's a, you know, there is a lot of reward and in, in, in faithful well-doing, but then there comes times where there are strategic moments in God and we, we call a general quarters, if you would. We call for a holy convocation. We call, in other words, for an assembly for people to, of God who can hear His voice and those people who are, as it were, minute men in the kingdom to immediately come and begin to participate with us in a strategic purpose in God. I do not believe that we're just here and that we exist for a little while and whatever we do, it's just a series of random events like throwing the dice and whatever you decide works. I don't believe that. I believe that we have a strategic assignment by the one who ordained us, who called us, who created us, who brought us into this new life in Christ Jesus and that we've got to understand what it is. And tonight I'm here to announce to you what it is. Are you ready to hear? Yeah. Hallelujah. First of all, I want to be able to help you understand that Satan knows that his days are short. 
He is very much aware of the fact that the time is short for him and he's doing everything he can uh, in his power to try to prevent it from happening. I'm going to say it again. People think that Satan has put his hands in the handcuffs and that he's back and, you know, he's purring little kitten and that somehow he is no, has no power or no way to affect anybody right now. That is the craziest bunch of nonsense that you possibly could ever imagine. That's almost as bad as believing that he doesn't even exist. Satan knows that he has a, but a short time. And he actually does believe that he could overthrow God. He does believe that if he can gather enough influence, if he can, if he can do enough to stop and prevent the movings of God and the anointing of God from being able to work in the earth and among men, he actually has deceived himself and he actually believes that somehow he can prevent his demise. One day we recognize that in Revelation chapter 12, this is not what really I'm going to preach on tonight. I'm just trying to set the platform for you to recognize that people, we're not going to have a shaking, a great awakening. We're not going to see the millions of people that are, are totally unimpacted by the power of God because Satan as the strong man is more powerful than the church in the land. I'm going to tell you right now, as it stands right now, Satan is more powerful than the church in the land. He's not more powerful than God. He is more powerful than the church in the land otherwise things would not remain as they are and God has not purposed that things remain as they are he's looking for a church that will mobilize themselves to coming into a place of imitating Christ Jesus of receiving divine power and authority that has been given to us that he poured out when he poured out the Holy Ghost so that we will walk as his ambassadors in his stead as his representative as his mouthpiece as the person who is executing his will in the earth and Satan will do everything he possibly can to do to stop that and to prevent that. And it is amazing the things that people let him get away with. He doesn't really have to seem like he doesn't have to bring out the big guns, you know. I was saying this morning, you know, Iran would love to overcome, would love to destroy America. You know why Iran can't destroy America? Because it doesn't have the power. That's the only reason. It's, it's a blip of power on the radar compared to our power in the United States of America. If the war would last about 48 hours, maybe stretching it. Just trying to extend it out a little bit, trying to do a, human, a humanized war. If we really unleash the power that we have, it'd be less than 48 hours. If Israel would unleash the power it had, it'd be less than 48 hours. Today we stand at a, it, it, at a crossroads, we're engaged in a warfare and people need to understand how to war as Paul said to Timothy how to war a good warfare and the only way you're going to war a good warfare is to take heed to the things that Paul was telling Timothy to take heed to the things that the Holy Ghost has made very clear to who we are and what we're supposed to be doing because I'm going to tell you right now it does not take much for Satan to neutralize you it's evident and I'm talking about the whole church I'm not just talking about you we're talking we're addressing the issues as they are Right now, across this land, the United States of America, across Europe, there is absolutely no way when God has given us such authority and such power that we should have such little results. We know on the time scale and the timeline of, of God's plan for the church and the timeline of God's plan for the things that He's going to do throughout the eternal future that. Right, right now we are at a, a, a point in time where God has given to us all authority over the powers of darkness and it's up to us as to whether or not we're going to participate and to what level and what dimension we'll participate. Satan, knowing that his day is short, knowing that Revelation chapter 12 will surely come to pass where he and his angels will be cast down out of heaven into the earth. They know, Satan knows that it's on God's timeline that that shortly after he and his angels are cast out of heaven, out of the unseen realm, because they're not in heaven with respect to where Father is, they've already been cast out. Jesus said, now is the prince of this world cast out. He said, now is he judged. Hey, Satan has no more place. God has translated us 
and all those who belong to him out of this world into the kingdom of the dear son. They are two completely separated, isolated realms now like never before. As isolated and as separated as light is from darkness. It's not like it was in the days of Daniel. It's completely changed. Spiritual dimension of things are completely different now. And he knows that in a very short, within a th about a, less than a three, well, less than a four-year span, just a little over three years, that an angel will come and will bind him with a chain and will cast him into a prison, into a pit for 1,000 years. He knows it. He's doing everything he could possibly do to prevent it. Don't you, ab don't you, listen to me, don't you be deceived. <laughs> don't you think any differently. That is why he is at work. He does believe that there is a way that he can prevent that day. We at war. You're going to have to understand the fleshly lust war against your soul. And if you don't know how to fight, you better learn. You're going to have to understand the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. And you're going to understand what that's all about. Because what God has purposed, Satan is extremely against. God has purposed to use us in a great moving of the Spirit right here. In, this, in the nation of the United States of America, right here in Southern California, but it's going to take something on the level of you no longer living unto yourself, but now living unto him who bought you and purchased you and ordained you and called you and separated you unto himself. It's going to take supplications and, and prayer and intercession and the giving of thanks so that we can see uh, all men come to Jesus, for God would have no men, no one, he would not have, he's not willing that any perish. He would have all men come to the knowledge of the truth. But there is going to have to be a mobilization of our life. There's going to have to be a strategic value to our lives that we understand how to participate with the Lord Jesus Christ in these things and not be carried away by everything that, that's, that is happening that Satan is doing. People need to get enough discerning of the spirits so that they can be, under, be aware of what's taking them into this place where that they themselves become under the authority and power and dominion of the enemy. And not only are they not neutralized, they actually become a slave to the enemy he just says you go sit up in your corner and you shut up and you got and you that's just it and you go sit over in your corner and you shut up and you don't know why prayer's not flowing out because Satan told you to go sit in your corner and shut up and you and you don't know why praise isn't flowing out and you don't know why the river doesn't flow because the spirit of, because the powers of darkness that you gave place to said go over in your corner and shut up and you have no power nor ability against them the only thing you could do is begin to cry out to God and ask Jesus to cleanse you in, the, in his precious blood and deliver you from an oppressing evil spirit that you opened up the door to and, is allowed, and you've allowed to come into your life. The enemy, Satan, can't tell me to do that. I don't know if you noticed that, but I haven't been quiet for a long time. Hallelujah. I've found a place of prayer and play, praise. I tell you, dear people, if you will stop laying a foundation of just having a religious prayer, a religious prayer is a prayer that is uttered. It's not about touching heaven. It's just about doing an, a religious exercise. If from now on you gave yourself to pray, prayer and you wouldn't stop praying until you touched heaven, don't even start unless you're don't even start unless you're going to get it unless you're going to get it done, huh? And God's called you and I to get it done. He's called us to continue in prayer. Hallelujah. He's called us to be instant in prayer. Hallelujah. He's called, called us to pray without ceasing. Hallelujah. He's given to us the ability to pray with all prayer and supplication in the Holy Ghost. To pray in the Holy Ghost. Do you want me to show you how to pray in the Holy Ghost? That's praying in the Holy Ghost. That's praying in the Spirit, in other words. That's what Paul said it was in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And he made a clear distinction between praying in the Spirit and praying with the understanding. He said you need to do both. And he always started with the Spirit and ended up with the understanding. He said, sing in the Spirit and sing in the understanding also. And that's a glorious realm. But I'm going to tell you something, dear people. The glory realm of it is not going to be seen until there is a church that's willing to participate with it on a scale that they will not in any way weary in well-doing and they won't stop short of what God's promised to give them. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's too much stopping short. Now, this stuff of stopping short is going to have to come to an end now. In Jesus' name, I'm telling you. This stuff of stopping short is going to have to come to an end. People want to see people say all the time that they want to participate with God, but I see them sit in silence. You need to, when the time you come in this building, even before you come in this building, it is your assignment by God to yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. And so you, you're going to yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. That's not something you transcendental meditate in. 
And I think that most people who say they're Christian got confused with Buddhism. And they sit around all in silence and think something's going to happen because they're sitting there in silence. It ain't going to happen that way. You're going to have to begin to participate with God and begin to allow the Holy Ghost to, to, to intercede through you, to pray through you. And you just... Not sit in silence. Get engaged in God. Participate with God. And I'm going to tell you right now, you will find a place of receptivity. You will find a place of fellowship. You will find a place of an anointing that God will increase more and more into you in, in your life until a place that can't be contained where you're at right now and Father's going to have to use you in a greater way. Yeah, that's what he wants to do. Nobody just comes, gets up on the platform, just has a debut moment because they had the right connections and then that has, that's how, you know, ultimately they got a ministry. Not and change the generation, not and change the nations of the earth. <laughs> no, they, had, they touched God in the prayer room. They touched God in the privacy of their life. When nobody else was watching, that's where you develop a fellowship with God. And out of that, you get to minister. And out of that, God uses you to begin to touch nations and touch people around you. And you're going to have to understand that this gift of salvation, this gift of eternal life, this gift of the life of God is more valuable to you than the other things that you put a value on. In Jesus' mighty name, and I'm telling you, you're getting it. I'm telling you, this church will do those things and carry out the assignments which God has given us to do and carry out the assignments which God has given us to carry out because we're not going to will We're not going to weary. You can't, you can't stop me. You can't stop people like me. I mean, I'm telling you right now, there's just absolutely no way that I'm going to slow down or give up because it's God's what God said. It's not what I'm doing. It's what God's doing. It, it's the assignment that Father has purposed to bring to pass. And when you realize that and understand that, all you need to do is engage and be faithful in participating with the Lord. Now, I'm not going to watch people sit around and tell me they want to be filled with the Holy Ghost and then when we begin, or they want to be filled with the things of God that they want to engage in heaven. Then when we begin to engage, they just sit there in silence. Somebody needs to come and shake you out of your sleep. Amen. Huh? I'm going to leave that to the Holy Ghost to do it. And he's going to, and, and, you know, he's going to do it. I believe that God and his grace is going to do it. I believe that God's, I mean, whatever he's got to do to do it. Whatever he's got to do to wake people up. I'm just believing that, you know, that that's exactly what's going to take place. Satan knows that, that unless, something, unless he can do something about this program, that after being bound for a thousand years, he's only going to be loose for a little season. He's loose for a little season and believes once again that he, can, that he has an opportunity to overthrow God. I don't know what's all going on in the dynamics of these things. I just know what God's going to allow. I just know what he said in his word. I just know how, how forcefully Satan and how effectively Satan fights to neutralize and to, to, in every way he possibly can, to invalidate the authority that has been given to you and me. What kinds of things then changes that? What kind of things changes everything around? First and foremost, this is what changes that. It's the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. Changes the dynamic of what Satan is allowed to get away with. We watch as all of these immoral powers and all of these governmental agendas actually have taken a place of dominance over anything that the church could do. It wasn't always that way. God has given us the authority to make disciples out of the nations. And now the nations are trying to make us their disciple. They're trying to tell us what we've got to do and what we've got to believe and how we've got to behave and what we're allowed to do and not allowed to do when it comes to the things of the kingdom of God and the expressions of the will of the Father, what's moral, what's right, what's godly, what's good. Even to the point of trying to put a gag order on us. to say we can't say the name of Jesus. And I see that that gag order is working on people in the church of the United States of America. Where they just sit there in silence instead of shouting. When the power of God is flowing. Where Pentecostal power is as real and as vital as it was on the day of Pentecost. As present people are sitting there silent. It's because you are under the influence of an oppressive evil spirit. Satan says get in your corner. Shut up and be quiet and you have to listen. But I'm going to tell you right now. You don't have to live in that prison no more. You don't have to live in that oppression anymore. You don't have to remain silent. You do not have to, you do not have to obey what Satan said. It does, whatever, you can rise up, take the name of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ and begin to pray and begin to praise until a breakthrough comes till you touch heaven. 
If you, if, you're, if you purposed it in your heart, if you have an honest and sincere heart, if you believe that God is and that God is a rewarder of those who are coming to seek Him, all you've got to do is begin to engage in this realm <laughs> and build up, build yourself up in your most holy faith in this realm. It won't be long. And you'll have, a, you'll have prayers that avail, avail, avail much. In other words, they're powerful. They are effective. God has purposed that prayer would change things. God has first purpose that prayer binds the powers of darkness, that prayer releases divine power and grace to those who are blinded by the powers of darkness. It's prayer, it's intercessor, intercessory prayer, it's supplicative prayer, it's prayer with petition, it's prayer in the spirit. It's God's people saying, look, I'm not going to anymore be bound up by the powers of darkness and blockaded out through the interest and strategic powers that he's waged against me. I'm going to do what God says no matter what it takes. Hallelujah. You can't tell me that you are not going to obey God because you're obeying mammon. I obeyed mammon. I served mammon all day and I'm too tired to serve God when I get home. You need to understand you're no longer supposed to live unto yourself but unto Christ who died for you. You're not supposed to please yourself but you're supposed to please Him. You're not supposed to do the things that are convenient for you but you're supposed to give yourself a living sacrifice unto God and recognize that you are right now assigned by God in a strategic place for a strategic time to do things that only you are willing to... Only those like people like you could possibly be, be able to do if they're willing. Are you willing... This is what you're going to have to understand. Are you willing? Uh, well, in the name of Jesus Christ, I believe with all of my heart that you're willing. I believe with all of my heart that you need to understand at the same time how to be strengthened by the power of God so that you'll be able to do what you're willing to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, and of course, I've already, you know the verses of Scripture that I've already referred to. I believe 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 19, first, first 17, 19. It's the first, first Scripture I refer to. That you may be able to war a good warfare. Then I'd refer to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. They're God power. We don't, though we in the flesh, rather verse 3, though we in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Huh? That's verse 3. And then verse 4, the weapons of our warfare are are not carnal, they're not natural weapons. But it's God power, they're mighty weapons. Do you understand the weaponry? Do you understand what the weaponry is that God has given to us to be able to wage an effective war against the powers of darkness because they're very fortified in their purpose. I mean, they, they, they've got everything in on this thing. They're not, they don't have a divided interest here. You know, many of God's people have divided interests. They're trying to hang on trusting themselves, hanging on to their life in this world with one hand and, and at best hanging on to the life in the kingdom of God with the other hand. I'm going to tell you right now, it, you're, you, you know, that's a very terrible place to be. It ain't going to be long. Something's going to give. Huh? Don't be in that position. Rather, there's a much better position for you to be in. The power of the Holy Ghost is here tonight to touch you, to strengthen you and to... And, to give you the divine ability to live according to those things that Christ Jesus has described in his word, according to the will and the plan of the Father, but you're going to have to be willing to receive right now. The power of the living God is here, but you're going to have to be willing to receive. People think that God is going, that they're going to be able to drink with their mouth shut. Well, then I would like to see that done. Would somebody please come and demonstrate that? I'm very interested in Seeing you drink with your mouth shut, with your lips closed to tight together. Uh, people think that they're going to, God's going to come and fill their mouth with their mouth shut. No, Father's going to come, Father's going to come and fill you as you begin to lift up your voice and you begin to lift up your praise and you begin to lift up your song. 
as you begin to lift up your shout. I watch people all the time. God's called them to do something and that they don't do it. I'm going to tell you why you don't do it because you, too tr you trust in yourself instead of the power of God that would give you the ability. You're always trying to figure it out. You're always looking to your own resource, your own strength, whether or not you feel good enough about it, whether or not you're inspired. You're going to have to quit that. You're going to have to stop that and recognize the Father's called you to live in the righteousness which is by faith. In other words, to live by the Spirit of the living God, to walk in the Spirit, to live in this place where God empowers you. And you say, Holy Spirit, I want you to come and strengthen me, re-strengthen me right now so I can do what I'm really living here for. I, I, I spent, I just now spent eight hours or nine hours or ten hours at work. That's not why you created me anew in Christ Jesus to go to work for eight to ten hours. I can't serve mammon and serve you too, Lord. Because I'll hate one and, hate, and love the other. Huh? I can't give all of my life and all of my energy to my, the pursuit of my own self-interest and be right with God. And so we're not going to do that. We're going to recognize, wait a minute. It isn't about being busy either. It's about being baptized in the Holy Ghost. It's about being filled with the Spirit. It's not being, about being occupied with so many different activities. It's about how are you able to receive from heaven because heaven is continually pouring out. And how you're able to receive from heaven is manifested every time you come into this church and every time we watch people come and fill the churches of the United States of America who are just looking for a good band to get up and make them excited and has nothing to do with the anointing. It's just absolutely another realm. It's another realm. Huh. We're here to get you engaged in a place and praying in the Holy Ghost and connecting with God and hooking up with the things of the anointing that if you were in a dark prison, you would be able to have the same manifest glory of God uh, as if you were sitting in the church or wherever you're at because Father's always there. He's just, the anointing is always there. The power of God to empower you, to fill you up is always present. You just don't know how to connect. You don't know how to hook up. By the help and the grace of God, we're going to demand it of you to hook up. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I'll just start standing over the offering basket like Jesus did. Recognize that you can't give in the offering, you can't give. You can't hook up. It's a big part of revival. Everybody who's ever moved in revival has said the giving is just as much a part of the revival and the move of God in your life as anything else. If you can't give, you can't receive. If you can't hook up with God with your finance, you can't hook up with God in your spirit. People don't like to hear that because then they try to equate that to, oh, are you saying that you've got to buy something from God? It has nothing to do with it. It's an improper uh, connection. It's, a, it's improper context altogether. It has to do with wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is also. It's about connecting. It's about hooking up in faith. It's about trusting God. It's about putting a principle that the most important thing in your life are these things that, that, that you're now participating with, that you're giving that which is valuable to you and meaningful to you, that belongs to those things that you live by. Well, there's not many offerings like that, really. You know, the widow with the two mites, she gave more than all the guys with the big, you know, money bags. Why? Because they gave out of their, they gave out of their abundance. She gave out of the food that she was going to eat off of. Somebody said, oh, that's so terrible. The preacher came into town, took the two widow mites. My God, somebody needs to do something about him. Hey, tell me that's love. Well, you ought to talk to Jesus about those two mites. You ought, to talk about, you ought to talk to God about how much he cares. He cares a whole lot more than you do. And all that is is just a demonic influence that the person's speaking out of anyways. And anybody who's got any discerning, discerning at all recognizes the voice that they just heard. If they heard somebody say that, oh, my God, the preacher came in and took the widow's two mites. Oh, that poor widow, she sent that evangelist all, uh, you know, she sent that evangelist about all of her money every month. Don't you worry. I don't care who the dance is. God's going to take good care of her because she did it in a pure and a right heart. What she was doing was taking care of, the, of God's business. She's going to be just fine, buddy. When you're starving, she's going to be eating good. <laughs> she's going to be just fine. When you, when you don't have nothing, she's going to be living in the palace. Listen to me now. Are you, I'm going to I'm gonna get a hold of you tonight. I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you go. If you're living by what you can earn out of your own ability, if you're living by what you can trust in with the arm of flesh, you're not living a life at all. Because God said, cursed is every man who trusts in their own ability. Cursed is every man who trusts in, his, in the arm of flesh. He said, blessed is the man who puts his soul trust in God. Where you begin to understand, Father's going to take good care of you. All you got to do is obey him and walk with him. I guarantee you, you'll put faith in your mouth and you'll speak with great boldness and confidence and certainty and it will surely come to pass. 
One of the wonderful things about not allowing Satan to get an advantage over you is he can't mess with you with his intimidation and his condemnation and all of his threats. He's not even allowed to get near you and allow in, in, in any way uh, participate in a function that would cause your heart to condemn you. And when your heart doesn't condemn you, you have confidence with God. When you've got confidence with God, whatever you ask God will do. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, but Father, I'll give you a blessed life if you just walk with him. He'll show you how to keep your relationships yeah. proper. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whew. Husbands and wives will be able to love one another like it would be impossible for them to do otherwise. Parents and children will have relationships with, with, with one another in such a way that it looks like they belong to heaven. They're citizens of heaven, which would be impossible for them to do otherwise. Father, breathe the blessing upon you. And you may have made a disaster out of your life up to this point. Nobody likes you and you all alone because you are just a miserable, cantankerous thing. And all you got to do is repent and cry out to God and get right, and he'll restore all those relationships. Isn't that wonderful? And you can hang your head and say, I've just messed up. I've been a big failure. Well, that's fine. Now, good. Now you can give your life completely over to the Lord, and he can make you a success. Because if there's anybody who knows that you're just going to mess up the program, it's you now. And so now you can turn everything over to God, and he'll live through you, and everything be good from here on out. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, good. you can't lose with God. You can't lose, with, I'm telling you, you can't lose with God when you put your trust in him. Amen. You can't lose with God. He knows how much of a sacrifice it might be for you to make the hour of prayer, for you to come and begin to cry out, Oh God, let the anointing be so strong that it melts the hardest heart. Oh God, do those things that you've done in the past, do it through me. Father, do it through us. Oh God, let Satan no longer prevail against us, but let your church shine glorious. He knows, he knows. He knows you already worn out when the power of God hits you like that and you spend the rest of your energy. Bottom line of it is, by the time you finish praying like that for an hour, you're ready to run a couple hundred miles. Uh, you had, I'm telling you, you just got refreshed. Uh, you'll get refreshed. I'm telling you, sickness will go, viruses will go. You'll learn how to live in divine health. You'll learn how to live in divine provision. Satan knows it, and so what he's going to do is try to occupy you with his strategic weaponry to keep you doing nothing but serving self-interest. I do not live for myself. My life is his. He bought me with a price. I belong to him. He's made you and I instruments or weapons of righteousness. It is amazing that we get to be a weapon of righteousness in the hand of the Holy Ghost so he can wield us. To subdue nations, amen. To work righteousness, to escape the edge of the sword, to quench the violence of fire. Hallelujah. Somebody said, what if they throw me in the fiery furnace? I'm telling you, you won't burn. Yeah, it'll be glorious. The whole nation will be turned to God because you will not refuse to do that which God commanded you to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They had enough discernment to recognize the music that belonged to a satanic realm. And they said, we will not bow to the music of a satanic realm. We will not bow to the idolatry and the imagery that you set up for yourself in a world system commanding us to come into obedience and alliance with it. We shall not, whether we live or whether we die, hear this, O oh king. We're not doing what you say. Hallelujah. And we don't even have to be that respectful with Satan. We just say, get out of here. We say, like Jesus said, you know how Jesus said it? Get out of my face. I know in King James, get behind me, get behind me Satan. That's not what it means. <laughs> the Hebrew language that would have originated from that or that what Jesus would have said, or really even the, the very layman's uh, Greek is, get out of my face. <laughs> I pray that you learn how to effectively say to the powers of darkness, Hey, get out of my face! Yeah. 
<laughs> out of here. You're out of here. I'm not listening to your lust. I'm not listening to your lies. I'm not listening to your intimidation. I'm not, I got your disguise. I know who you are. I know what it is you're trying to do. I understand the fashion and the form of you. I recognize that you're trying to overthrow the word of God in my life. you even trying to overthrow the word of God over every man's life. It ain't going to work around me. Get out out of my face. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You want to fight with someone, fight with the right person. Not your husband, not your wife, huh? not your friends, not your neighbors, not the guy that tried to run you off the road. <laughs> Whatever. You want to fight with a fleshly lust war against your soul, you better learn how to fight. I'll say it again. Fleshly lust war against your soul. You better learn how to fight. I tell you right now, God wants you to be able to war, a good warfare. He wants you to be able to fight, a good fight of faith. He wants you to be able to understand that he's given you weaponry. But you don't have to rely upon natural means to take care of yourself. You don't have to rely, rely. I don't have to rely upon that. You can't call 911 when Satan's running interference against the call of God upon your life. And I'm telling you right now, there is nothing more hurtful or harmful to you. Your soul, your life is not ever in any more jeopardy. You aren't hurt any worse. You're not in any more impacted situation than when Satan's up against you trying to stop you. And there ain't no 911. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal. Though we live in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We don't have, we don't go to, to natural weaponry. We don't go to natural means to so, solve our issues, to deal with our problems. Huh? In many respects, the things that Paul was saying in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. In many respects, he was dealing with things that people were saying against him, trying to stop his ministry, trying to stop his influence with the Corinthians. He said, I don't care. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Though I'm in the flesh, I've got weapons to deal with this thing that are not natural. Though the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they mighty. Get ready. Get ready. We're going to find out who, whose side God is on. We're going to find out who's been anointed of the Holy Ghost. We get ready. Because we've been equipped with the power of the living God. It's not only, it's effective in every dimension. And of course, we know in Ephesians chapter 6, Paul turns our heart to recognize, hey, guys, and this is a great, you talk about an empowering statement. When the Lord says to us, be strong, therefore, in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might, you're good to go. You're good to go. Strong in the strength of the Lord and power of his might. I'm telling you, there's not a strong man that exists that you can't bind. There, and, and, and the way that, a, well, the way that we're going to spoil the strong man's house, it isn't about the government. It isn't about the money. It isn't about uh, the disinterested people. It isn't about city ordinances or county ordinances. It's about a strong man that is in the realms of the demonic, an angel of darkness that rules over this place that God has given us authority to deal effectively with. And all you and I have got to understand is how to connect how to hook up with the supply that comes from the Holy Ghost and hook up with this order that God has placed within his house. Paul addresses these things that you may know how to behave yourself in the house of God. God he addresses these things so that you and I may understand how to, how to make the right connection so that we can be effective. And we're going to do this. We, we have to do this. we got to do it. And you know what? Here's the good news, people. If you're afraid and fearful, don't worry, don't worry. You can go home. Go. You can go home. And the Lord will still save. Whether by few or whether by many, he will still do it. Huh? You know what most people think of when they think of being part of a revival? Going to a place where somebody's already paid the price, where a group of people, a church, has already paid the price and joining in with all of the excitement. Woo! Oh, the power of God, dear. Wow, yeah, I've been going to church here for two days. Wow. <laughs> power 
our God's moving. We're right in the big middle of revival. No, you get in the rain off everybody else's roof. You didn't pay for any of that. You didn't participate in any of the price of that. There is a cost. There is a cost. Jesus paid it all for us, but he's called us, you and I, to come and lay down our life for a lost and dying world, to lay down our life for one another, to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. And if you haven't done that, then you don't know there's a cost to it. But I've done that, and I'm doing that, and I'm telling you there's a cost. <laughs> Are you with me? Are you, you know, you just, there's a cost. And when you recognize the cost, you're willing to pay the price. And then when you're in the, when you're in the crunch of the circumstance of doing what is, what is convenient for you or what, rather what is effective for you to do in the kingdom of God as his representative, then you've already got the decision made for you. You know, it's, it's one of the wonderful things about living by principle. If you live by principle, you don't have to, you don't have to decide anything for the rest of your life. It's already been decided for you. Huh? All you got to do is outline the principles by which you live by and it's, you've already, the decision's already been made. You don't have to think through nothing. You just go to the list. Oh, well, that decision was made. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Somebody says, hey, well, why don't you move over here and we, we got a job for you. We're going to pay you 10 times more than you're making. Huh? Mm -hmm. And boy, we're going to be good to you. And, we're gonna, and it's just, they stack it up there, stack it up like, you know, like piling gold up a mountain high. You already know what do your decision is made for you. You seek first the kingdom of God. You never make a decision outside the kingdom of God. You know how to make a decision about money. No, sorry, I can't do that. It's no, I'll pray about it stuff. No, I'm not doing that. You live by principle. Decision's already made. You don't have to come to the pastor and say, oh, pastor, tell me. Let me figure out what the will of the Lord is. You know, I'm, there's this person I've been thinking about marrying. And, and my goodness, they, you know, they're a really good person. They get drunk all the time. They don't go to church. And, and uh, you know, but I, I really believe they're going to change it. Well, you know, the decision's already made for you. You're living by a principle. You're not going to be unequally yoked with the unbeliever. You're not going to do that. It's a wonderful thing to live by principle. It's a wonderful thing to live by the word of God. You already know what it is you're supposed to be doing. Father's empowered us. It's not like that, you know, Paul in, in the book of Ephesians, he deals with the church in two, in two extremes. First and foremost, he's telling the church about how powerful God has made them. <laughs> he's telling the church about all the heavenly resources that they have, about their place and position in the kingdom of God. And then on the other side, he's saying, listen, I'm telling you right now, you've got to understand the God of this world, the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience had governorship over you, and now he doesn't have any governorship over you, but, but, but you're going to have to wake up because by and large, I, of course, I am now just paraphrasing here and, and, and just interjecting things, he, he's, he's, he, said his, he said himself, he, and I'm going to go I'll jump over to Peter if you don't mind, if you'll allow me. He goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, whom you better resist steadfast in faith. If you don't know how to resist, you better learn. It seems to me that somebody has not learned resistance. It seems to me that somebody has not learned how to fight yet. We need to get this across, this message across to you, that you're in a war, that fleshly lusts war against your soul, and you're going to have to learn how to deal with it. You're going to have to learn to fight. You're going to have to learn how to resist, because it seems like to me, he was just floating downstream on the air mattress of grace. <laughs> Give me a break <laughs> with a lemonade. <laughs> and we were little kids. We, we, we'd sing this song. It said, and the song went like this. It said, it went, run if you want to, run if you will, but I've come here to stay. It says, it says it's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. It's a battlefield, brother. Did you realize that this is the battlefield? The Lord saved you, brought you into the kingdom, and gave you this wonderful life. And it's a life that we can live in him, be protected by him, be kept by him. But it's a battlefield in the sense that Satan has purposed to, if he can't destroy your soul, if he can't get you back, if he can't deceive you into a place of serving him again, he's going to neutralize you. And that's what makes it a battlefield. There's a war afoot. I mean, the only way that we are going to get war, good, war, good warfare is if we stay over here in the anointing. I mean, when we kept by the power of God, we got it, we're good to go. When we understand we've been given all 
Uh, you know, this is the, this is the other dimension of, of what I believe a lot of people miss out on when they start talking about warfare and they start talking about the reality of a battlefield. They miss out on the power of God that has been made available to us. And then I, sometimes it seems like the people who understand, well, yeah, the Lord's given us the strength to be able to stand against all the powers of darkness. He's given us the ability. He's given us divine authority. They're just head knowledge. And they don't know how to connect with it so it becomes activated in their life to where that they can effectively deal with sin first of all. He is saying, oh, man, I'm, if you've had more anointing. Well, listen, I've got enough anointing to keep sin out of my life. My question to you is, do you have enough anointing to keep sin out of your life? <laughs> because that's where it begins. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you right now, if there's anything you want to understand, is that you're going to have to become an overcomer because of all the promises that the Lord has made is to those who overcome. And, 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 um, and we write unto you, young men, because you're strong, the word of God abides in you, and you've conquered the wicked one. That's the best way to live. And, and, and the Lord's given us the ability and the authority, and it's not some kind of life of terrible hardship. It's the life of walking in the Spirit. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's a life of being kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. It's a wonderful life. It's the life of, of the wicked one cannot touch you. Have you read that scripture? The wicked one cannot touch you. Isn't that a wonderful one? That's being baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. That's living there in the presence of his power and of his goodness and of his glory. And that's not going to happen when you come to church and just sit there meditating. That's not going to happen when you come to church and you've got all these ideas floating around in your head and you don't know how to connect with this divine power that makes you feel absolutely like you're 40 foot tall, as it were, that you have, you have, it makes you feel good, and that's about the best way to say it, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. It's feel good with all the, all the joy unspeakable and full of glory, love that passes all knowledge and peace that passes all understanding. I'm telling you, that's available for you right now. Would you like to have some? Yeah. We'll go ahead and receive then. Just go to Monday today. Let the Lord Jesus Christ begin to have place in your life to work every day so that you have an atmosphere of faith. Because without an atmosphere of faith, you can't receive. Nobody can receive anything from God without an atmosphere of faith. You can't please God without an atmosphere of faith in your life. If you're going to receive from God, you're going to believe that He is, that He's here, in other words. Hallelujah. And that he is rewarder of those who seek him. And that's not, that's every, that's all the time, anytime. All the time. People think that we'll seek the Lord and all of a sudden we're going to find him and go to heaven. You know, that so one day we're going to seek the Lord and one day we're going to, you know, we're going to catch up with him. That's not what the scripture's saying. If your absence of the glory of God, the manifest presence of God, and the joy and the provision, Lord, seek him and come. Ah, you'll find him. Not next year either. Now, right now. He's got him now, right this moment. Today is the day of his salvation. Today you get to find him, not later. My goodness, I'm glad that I don't have to wait 10 years. I'm glad that any time I call, any time I call, he answers. Any time I seek, I find him. I'm not going to sit, don't sit around. Don't sit around in your problem. Don't sit around in your circumstance. Don't sit around in a prison that Satan would try to, to put you in. Don't be sit around in a place where he's ultimately come, uh, uh, come somehow with some influence and told you to go sit in the corner and be quiet. Um, rise up from that. Get yourself some holy indignation. Amen. Rise up from that place. I mean, I just lift up your voice and begin to shout. No matter what Satan tries to do, one, there's one power that will instantaneously break every influence and everything that he tries to, get, to, to, to take you under his power with. And that is the name of Jesus. You call it Jesus! And he will answer you, come. And if you call the first time and nothing happens, just keep crying out and calling until something does happen. Don't practice starting, don't practice sitting around praying a prayer and you don't pray until glory comes. Don't you even start unless you're going to do it properly. Huh? Don't even start. All you're doing is laying a false foundation if all you do is pray and you're speaking out into the air. That's not faith. That's doubt and unbelief. God wants you and I to live in an atmosphere of faith. That atmosphere is only created 
as heaven touches your soul. Faith isn't created out of your mental ascent, out of your intellectual concept or whatever it is you're thinking about and think you understand and know, whatever you can diagram and figure it out. <laughs> Faith comes by the power of the Holy Ghost that fills you and touches you and, and, and brings to you such comfort in your soul. Hallelujah. <laughs> such assurance, such confidence. <laughs> such certainty. <laughs> such revelation. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, people think, listen, I've had dreams and I've had visions in God, but that to me there is nothing so wonderful as His manifest presence. There's nothing so wonderful as the revelation of Jesus. People, uh, I see them going after dreams and going after visions, and that's fine and wonderful, but there's something far, more be far better for you to be doing with your time, and that is engaging with the manifest presence, with, engaging with the Holy Ghost who's come to reveal Jesus. Oh, just do that. I'm telling you, if that's the value and the meaning of what you do when you begin to go to pray and you begin to cry out to God, if I take you back through the history of the church... We're always going to find men like Father Nash, a preacher who was rejected by his church after he built the church with his hands, after he established the church and people were going to that church. They decided that he was too old and too boring to be their pastor. They needed a younger guy who was more charismatic and dynamic. And they voted him out of his own church. Huh. You know what Papa did? He said, I'm going to hook you up with, I'm going to hook you up in the kingdom now. I'm going to have you, so I'm going to do something else with you. You're going to go before my other servant named Charles Finney, and you're going to pray. I'm going to give you an anointing to bind the powers of darkness, to bind the strong men. And when you've done praying, heaven will come down upon a nation. And we watch as Father Nash, rejected by men, accepted by the Father, rejected, closed out or shut out from public view, but shut in with the presence of the Lord, was used mightily by the Spirit of the living God to bring a great revival to the United States of America. Hallelujah. You can't lose with God. Hallelujah. He's got a divine assignment for you. When people throw you away, the Lord's going to take you up, I'm telling you. When people reject you, don't want you, Father's going to take you up if you're serious with Him. Hmm? People, we just want you to engage. We want you to engage. The fact of it is, there's nobody in here has been rejected like that to begin with. You know, I know people have been through hardships. I know people that have been abused. Huh? But you say, oh, you don't understand, I'm hurt. Well, that's a demon spirit. What, you think being hurt's an excuse for you acting like you act, being as you are? That's an excuse. It's acceptable. Okay, the Lord has acceptable, permissible allowance <laughs> for people who are hurt to act terrible. <laughs> no, he buy, he's got a provision so that, that hurt would be, you'd be delivered from that hurt. Hurt is a spirit of offense. It's a demon's power, it's a strategic demon power to isolate you from the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't have any hurts, praise God. Somebody says, why well, you have just been, been treated nice all your life. You have no idea <laughs> what it's like to be in the ministry. You have no idea how to get hate mail on a daily basis. You have no idea how, what it's like to have so many people praying that you will no longer be in the ministry. <laughs> but, I don't have, but see, I, I'm, I, I, I'm not ignorant concerning Satan's devices. No man can touch me. No words of men can touch me. No curse can touch me. Nothing can, because what God's blessed, nothing can curse. Huh? I'm not, you can look at a hard-hearted, rebellious Israel, and you've got Balak trying to get Balaam to curse him, and he's going, you can't curse those people, man. Those people. Uh, God will not regard iniquity nor behold perverseness in Israel. Uh, you can't curse those people. They blessed. They in the covenant. Didn't mean that God wasn't going to deal with those who were disobedient, because he did. Tens of thousands were destroyed by the destroyer. Seventy thousand devoured by the devourer. The earth opened up and swallowed up those who persisted to rebel against God. But he has a covenant. Today, God's got a covenant. 
that covenant is in Christ Jesus. Today, you and I can stand in this place of divine power and authority. There's no need for you to get a gag order. There's no need for you ever have to go to the cor corner and shut up and be quiet. There's no need for you to, to be overwhelmed with self-interest and find yourself missing out and losing out in, in God. There's no need. There's no need. What's going on in your heart is manifested on your face right now. It's not just manifested in your words, it's manifested on your face. Yeah. What's going on in your life, your agony, the issues, the condemnation, the guilt, the failure, the success, the confidence, the boldness, all on your face. Your encounter, the measure of your experience with the Lord's all on your face. It's on your face. Yeah. Huh. You can tell me about whatever you want to tell me. People, I've had people come tell me that they've seen Jesus. They ain't seen, they ain't seen Mickey Mouse. <laughs> You see Jesus, your life has changed. I'm down on you. you see Jesus. Ah, you think I you die, you know. And then they were all sad and sorrowful looking eyes, tormented eyes, pain upon their face, the scars of sin and iniquity and hard hardness written across their life. Jesus calls, it's just, Jesus is always calling, saying, please surrender, give it up to me. Don't pursue your own life anymore. He says, I want you to be baptized in my presence. So, see, Paul says he empowers us. He says, be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. How, did that, how does that happen? That's the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. That's being filled with the Spirit. So the Spirit of the living God is expressed through our life in, in an inexhaustible way. Whew. Just stay there. I mean, once you get under the spout where the glory comes out, don't move. Why move? Don't reposition yourself. Stay right there. Once you find the hookup, why look for another spot? Just stay right there. <laughs> Once you find that realm of Holy Ghost living, that place where you be continually filled with the Spirit, why should you go into another? How should you lose your way? Why return to that, uh, the garlics and the leeks when you living under the glory of heaven? My goodness, I don't even like leaks. Why return to that? Oh, goodness. Jesus, help us. That almost made me want to never have garlics, garlic even. We were going to trade garlics and leeks for the presence of the Lord. He tells us how to be strong. He tells us how to be empowered. He says, this, and, and, and Paul brings it up, and he, he's trying to help us understand what's going to... God has given us this divine empowerment. He's given us this divine assignment. He's, he, he, he's confirmed the absolute success that we will have. No question about it. But he says to us, warning. There's a warning. You wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness. In high places. You think it's tough dealing with the President of the United States? Deal with the angel of darkness that's trying to rule over the White House. You think it's tough, tough dealing with government officials? You think it's tough with dealing, dealing with that administrator behind the desk? <laughs> Who's been finally all their life wanted a little bit of power and now they got some and they are exploding with, with their newfound, their newfound authority. You think it's hard dealing with that person. You think it's hard dealing with an IRS agent on the phone. Try dealing with a demon spirit. <laughs> Therefore, take unto yourself the whole armor of God. Where does that come from? This is where it comes from. Being filled with the Spirit. Being empowered, being strengthened, being baptized afresh. Hooking up with one who has more power than any power or dominion that is named. That doesn't happen passively, it happens actively. It happens actively. You engage in that. You don't just sit around saying, oh, God, you know where I'm at. Listen, dear people, you taken out. Satan occupies the void. 
He occupies the void. He rushes in. Wherever there's a void, he rushes in. It's like an empty container that suddenly opened up to the world around it. The world around it rushes into that vacuum, that void. You need to be filled. You need to be filled up so much. So, uh -huh. somebody said, just how filled should I get? Just how full should I get? You should be so filled that you've got not a, not a trickle coming out, not as a little oozing coming out. No, 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 not a amount of a water hose or a fire hose, not a, not a little brook, no, not a stream, not a river, but rivers. Rivers is a real realm. It's a real realm. If I can convince you, it's a real genuine realm. If you don't have this realm, you're going to be taken out. You're going to be taken out. You can't stand against the powers of darkness. You can't do it on your own. You'll be taken out. The righteousness which is by faith is proof that the only way that you and I can walk this walk is through the gift that God has given by the power of the Holy Ghost, by His strength. God has not purposed that we should live out of the realms of our own ability anymore. He has purposed that we should live by the life of God, the gift of life that's been given to us, the gift of the Holy Ghost, the very life of Jesus Christ, the very life of God Almighty. People walk as mere men. They live as mere men and want to try to convince us of their relationship with the Lord. Religion to the full. Religion, an offering left on the altar way too long. Because it starts stinking after just a few hours. It gets real ripe after 24 hours. It's ripe. After, I'm telling you right now, after a couple of days, ain't nobody can stand to go in the room. <laughs> yeah, you might have presented yourself an offering, but you needed the fire to come quickly. You need to let the fire come quickly. So it would be a good smelling offering. A pleasant aroma. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody said, oh no, I saw him. He was kissing a girl on the front row. She's my niece. Hallelujah. Get the whole family on the front row. Amen. God says it begins with your house and your household first, and then it extends. Hallelujah from there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mary son and Nangalama no Yashiprotaya. You know. You know, there is a place to, where you listen and you engage, you receive, you get something, you have it, it touches you. <laughs> we want you to be more than just listening with your intellect. We want you to do more than just taking notes. <laughs> we want you to take note <laughs> that the presence of God is here in the place and he will fill you and bring into remem your in bring into your remembrance all these things that he has spoken unto you. <laughs> uh, you don't even have to remember on your own. Ah, you don't have to do nothing on your own. All you got to do is believe him and trust him and live for him. Say, God, take hold of me, lead me, guide me. I want you and nothing but you. My mind ain't letting go, Jacob. I am confident, I am confident that everybody in this place is going to understand how to work good warfare where Satan can't bring sadness on you. He can't cripple you with intimidation. He can no longer, he can no longer control you with fear. Uh, he, he can no longer uh, swirl you into his influence and get you spinning around with confusion. You do not know which way is up. 
<laughs> you, you there consistent day in, day out, faithful day in, day out, full of joy day in, day out, full of peace day in, day out. Hallelujah. Man, somebody says, I don't really even know what to do or what to say to the kids at school. Let me just tell you, what you want to do is be full of the Holy Ghost. You won't have to say anything. They're going to start something, saying something to you. They're going to notice. There's, 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 isn't that right, Ruthanna? They're going to notice that there is a difference. Huh? That's right, Elizabeth. I, can, I, I want to interview my kids because they, they've experienced it. Huh? I mean, Elizabeth was at state, and they go, and they started saying, this is a real Christian because evidently they have recognized that there's a whole bunch of folks that aren't real Christians. Why? Because she was unwilling to compromise a principle and it became very evident. Uh, and the people that are around her, that, you know, in the discipline that she was in, they were demanding of her to compromise her principles. And she goes, no way. They said, you can't be successful in this. And she said, well, I'm not compromising my, my principles. Well, the, good, the beautiful thing of it is, first and foremost, what a witness it was. It touched me was like, look, this, this person's a real Christian. They're not gonna, I mean, they're going to throw it all in. They're going to lose their whole career because they won't compromise. Oh, no. And the professor said, you in the wrong discipline. Hey, she won two Emmys. I mean, goodness gracious, when it was all done. Huh? I think she, huh? I, 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 I believe that if you do not bend or and you do not bow, I believe, I believe that you'll find out that you do not burn either. I believe that when you give no place to the devil, we find out who's really in control, who's really in charge. For God rules in the kingdom of men. I tell you, Christ Jesus rules. When we give ourselves over completely to him and find our trust in him, Satan can do nothing. No power cannot stop us. Cannot influence our attitudes, our emotions. That's where it begins. Cannot touch me. He, my, my attitudes, my emotions, my feelings, my thinking are consecrated to the Lord belongs to him. He's the only one going to touch me there. Hallelujah. Uh, hey, Satan has no access. Some of you were not raised in a realm to understand how to resist the devil. You in a, you're happy. You're in a good place. We're going to show you how. Just follow us. Huh. We're gonna, I mean, there's a lot of people. You cannot follow their faith. Just look at their face. You can't follow their faith. <laughs> I'll say that again. There's a lot of people you cannot follow their faith. Just look at their face. Watch them when the prayer starts. You don't see them engaging. Watch them when the worship starts. They're barely singing. Don't follow. They can't follow that. And God wants to cause every one of you to be raised up into such a place that everybody can follow your faith. Then when somebody walks in here and they start looking around, every face they see is filled with the glory and the expressions of Jesus. They're going, they're, they're going I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. I, I'm in him. I did not know that I died, but somehow I got to heaven. Because that's what the church is supposed to be. It's supposed to be heaven. The church is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever Jesus is, is heaven. You can't, everywhere Jesus goes is heaven. You can't, you can't, oh my, 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 my. You can't be anything but blessed when every, when you're in heaven. And you and I are the expression of heaven. Oh, to take up our responsibility, to recognize. You may look to yourself and feel like, oh, man, I got up, I got so t I'm so tired, I'm so worn out, and I got bad news. But if you ultimately find that place of connecting with the Lord where he alone has access to your emotions, you immediately can get supercharged with divine glory and feel great boldness and great confidence. And it couldn't be better for you if you had everything going your way. If you were already in heaven, couldn't be better for you. There's a way to connect. There's a way to be filled up. There's a way to put upon the whole, there's a way to take unto yourself the whole armor of God. Huh. There's a way to be girded about with truth. There's a way to have on a breastplate of righteousness. When you got a breastplate of righteousness, you're walking around as bold and as confident. I mean, my goodness, that, there is nothing that can stop you because there's nothing that can intimidate you because nothing can condemn you. You have boldness before God. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I'm telling you, boldness is just as much of a fruit of the Spirit as love is. A confidence, assurance, fruits of the Spirit as forgiveness and mercy are too. You don't get a whole list in Galatians. It's just a partial list. The evidence. What is the fruit of the Spirit? It's the evidence that I'm allowing the Holy Ghost complete control. It's the evidence that I know how to connect. It's the evidence that I'm yielding myself to Him. Listen, connecting with God is the easiest thing. It's like breathing, man. It's like breathing. You just gotta you just gotta get out of the smother room. Uh, 
Did you know that Satan has come to bind you? To bind you. To bind you. To smother you. When Satan launches attacks against people and people begin to step in to, to realms of advancing the kingdom of God, casting out devils, there are some pretty wild things that go on. You get to see what Satan is doing. Over the past four weeks, three, four weeks, the Lord has made me more sensitive to the activity of demon spirits than I have ever in my life, only for the purpose of authority over them to cast them out because Papa's getting us ready for something. See, he's teaching us how to function in the weaponry that he's given to us. He's teaching us how to function in the authority that has been supplied to us. He's teaching us how to walk in divine ability. All we've got to do is be faithful to stay right here and learn. Don't get in a hurry. <laughs> You're going to bring forth fruit with patience when the seed of God has been sown into good ground. An honest and sincere heart says, God, are you all I want, you all I need, all I desire is to see your glory. I'm not looking for anything else. Well, when you're not looking for anything else, nothing else can disappoint you, can it? Are you with me? When you're not looking for anything else, nothing else can disappoint you, can it? Huh? When you only got one desire, and that's in Christ Jesus, then you don't have desire anywhere else. You're happy all the time. Are you with me? The only way you can get dis disappointed is if the Lord rejected you, and he's not going to reject you. Isn't that good? He's not going to cast you out. He's not going to send you away. Father, once she called a masalaya, Moda said a big illuminaya, Mambo Brasi, he wants you to have on the helmet of salvation. Mobuko Ripapaya, La Hate Hishita, Mongo Brasi, to know who you are, the helmet of salvation. For me, it's the same as the mind of Christ, to be, to be, have the privilege of literally putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. You want a war, a good warfare? Do you want to understand how to stay, how, if you want to understand, how to deal with fleshly lust at war against your soul? Understand this. Put on, therefore, the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. There it is. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you're going to be able to fight and stand against the powers of darkness. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> when does that happen? Once in your lifetime? Every day. Every day. You can consecrate the morning to the Lord. <laughs> you just wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I'm living for you. Hallelujah. And I just thank you that you gave me the power to do it. I offer up my will and my life as a living sacrifice to you. Hallelujah. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Hallelujah. Oh God, I'm on you. Take my heart. It is your own. It shall be your royal throne. As you caught him on the day for the Holy Ghost, I'm here to be led by you, taught by you, guided by you, strengthened by you, protected by you, baptized by you. I'm, I'm going to be led by you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to live in you, walk in you, do only those things you want me to do. Reveal Jesus through me. And I ask this, Father, in Jesus' name. And then you just, you just, why you just got on the whole armor of God? Because if it went to a place where you touched heaven, heaven touched you, you got filled up, you got strengthened, you got empowered. Your, your, your eyes aren't set upon the tricks and the devices that Satan could use to lure you in. Hallelujah. You know what it does to children when mom comes out every morning glowing with the glory of heaven? <clears throat> you know what it does to children? It strongly impacts them. When mom comes out out of the bedroom, <clears throat> shining with the presence of Jesus, because there she knows, she knows that place to connect with heaven before she ever comes out into the kitchen. <laughs> wow, come on now, mamas. Come on now. Hey, I'll tell you right now, there's nothing better that you can do for you and everybody around you than learning how to let the Holy Ghost take charge over your life. Yes. Hallelujah. There ain't no, there's no one who knows that you're upset more than your children. Or there's no one who knows that you're happy more than your children. And, you're, and your purpose of seeing people brought into the kingdom of God needs to begin with what's going on at home. To have the mind of Christ. <laughs> to have the mind of the Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. You want, you, want a knowledge, you want the knowledge of God? <clears throat> you want to be able to flow in the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom? You want these knowledge, this knowledge of God, the discerning of spirits? The Lord wants you to have the mind of Christ. He wants you to have the mind of spirit. He wants you to see things the way he sees them. He wants you to look on things around you in the same way that he looks upon them. He wants you to view life through his eyes. Oh, what a wonderful way to live. Yeah. Satan can't get in there. He can't even get in there. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Nothing that he does, no device that he has works there. <clears throat> I believe that if there's ever a time 
that God's people have got to get more radical than ever before it's now. Because in past generations, there was always a pretty radical level of consecration and holiness. I mean, reality of it is, is sinners 70, 80 years ago, people who didn't even go to church, wouldn't allow things in their house that Christians allow today. It's true. The things that people allow that comes through Hell's box office, I think they call that HBO. That's the acronym. Did you know that was that? That was the name. Is it Hell's box office? That's what it stands for. And all these other movie channels that I somebody tell me Christians have those. What? You, you don't know. You you don't know God. You don't know the voice of the Holy Ghost. You can't watch that nonsense. You can't participate with that. You can't take that stuff into your bosom. You can't, you can't intermingle your spirit with that. There's no way. No. Christian liberty? Yeah, no, Christian liberty? Christian liberty is freedom to, to walk over here in this wonderful grace of the living God, to walk over in this heavenly realm, to, to have power and authority over sin and death and the devil. My goodness gracious. To be drawn into that fear and that lust and that torment, to wrap your emotions up with all of that craziness. Give me a break. Holy Ghost, grieve you. You'd be grieved. Immediately grieved. You want to learn how to hear the voice of God? It's got to start with what He's trying to communicate to you about you and about your relationship with Him. That's where it begins. If you went around trying to say they got the mind of the Spirit, heard the voice of God, they've not learned how to even walk with God. It's nonsense. It's, not, it's foolishness. It's nothing to do with God. It's foolishness. It ain't going to change anything about their life. It ain't going to change anything about anybody's life around them. So it would be evident for anybody who had just looked at it with any kind of a sensible logic to say, what, this foolishness? I ain't going to fix nothing. Huh? Mm -hmm. It's like bringing a computer scientist nerd out to work on your car. <laughs> all he's done is play computer games all of his life. He doesn't even know what a 316 cents is. A 316 inch socket sounds like a, a body part. <laughs> Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. That's what's going to happen with you. That's what's going to happen with you. When you feel the Holy Ghost, in the morning, feel the Holy Ghost at night. When you walk out of, when you walk out of this place, you feed shot with the preparation of the gospel. What, well, what does that mean? That means you can't shut up about Jesus. That's what that means. You can't shut up about the light that is in God, the, 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 the beauty of all that he's done for us. And, and you can't shut up about the things of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Um, you only come under the intimidation and the fear of the enemy when you're over in this realm. I was, I'm going to read a few verses of scripture to you. And of course, we know <clears throat> that the whole armor of God is not complete without the shield of faith. Shield of faith, I quench every vile, I can quench every fire and dart of the wicked. Amen. Amen. People think Satan's got to win more or less every day. They say got to sin more or less every day because Satan's got to win more or less every day. He ain't got to win. <laughs> Preacher is saying, are you telling me, Pastor, that I can live without sin? I said, well, sure he can. He said, no, that can't be possible. I said, sure. I said, well, let's go. Let's walk through the 17 works of the flesh and see which one you got problems with. <laughs> I said, now, my dear brother, have you had a problem with adultery today? He goes, well, of course not. I said, well, praise God, we got one of 17 down. <laughs> and I, we went on through the list. Fornication, had any problem with that? <laughs> I said, and I had cleanness. You've been having some homosexual thoughts. And, uh, and he, I said, <laughs> we just got to get graphic, got to get, talk about lasciviousness for a few minutes. Then we just got into the nitty-gritty of witchcraft. You've been dealing with that? Wanted to just get in a circle and worship Satan for a while, okay? We were halfway done. <laughs> Anybody you hate, you've been just hating on him, you know? Look, you really can, man, I'm telling you. You can live a, you can, 
you can start off living a whole day enjoying the presence of the Lord. I, I, I ought to just call for a holy convocation and call everybody to a sin-free day. Come over here, fast and pray and rejoice and worship the Lord. And then you discover... <laughs> and you discover how good it is to live in a sin-free day and you go for a second one, then for a third, then for a fourth. And you find yourself, my goodness, this is a good life over here. Being kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed right now. I'm not concerned about missing and catching away. I'm ready to be revealed. Oh, hallelujah. I'm ready. You know, last Sunday I ministered on uh, <laughs> the catching away. And any time I minister on things that are not popular doctrine, I'm t of course, they used to be popular among the church. I mean, so many people fall away, especially in the Pentecostal movement. Man, uh, you know, and I'm not, and the, enemy, the enemy come with all those repercussions. To me, it's a bunch of nonsense. Just pick up a shoe and throw it at him or whatever. <laughs> and shut up, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> Leave me alone. Get out of here. Uh, yeah. And, but... Um, so the Lord whispered to me. You know what the Lord whispered to me? Because I've spent my life in prophecy and, and studying prophecy, and I can give you a lot of convincing arguments for the catching away and proofs of why that, that's the only way, that's part of the first resurrection, the only way it's going to be. The Lord whispered to me. You know what he said? He said, those who add this book, the plagues of this book should be added to them. Therefore, if you don't add to it, you're not getting any of the plagues. Therefore, you're not there. Because the scripture is written as though it's the generation that's going to have the event. The scripture is written as Paul never believed that he was not, that he was going to live out his life and die and go to heaven by way of the grave. He thought he was going to be caught away. That's why he only ministered on the catching away. He believed that it was all going to be wrapped up before he left this earth. Hallelujah. Don't add to the book. Papa, if you're interested in hearing the doctrine of God, if you're interested in hearing what the Spirit of the Lord has to say, he'll come and whisper to you, give you wisdom, and give you insight concerning the things of the Lord. And you'll be convinced. You'll know exactly what the plan of God is. Wisdom's knowing what God is doing and cooperating with him. Let me just tell you, let me help you understand something. If you knew right now, and this is what we're seeking after, if you knew right now what Father has planned to do, what's exactly in his heart, what are his concerns, what he wants to do. If you knew it, if we understood that right now, and we did exactly what it is he wants to do, we're absolutely going to be successful. And the beautiful thing of it is he hasn't left it a mystery. And the beautiful thing of it is you don't have to fast for 100 days. Can you imagine how hungry you'd be after fasting for 100 days? Can you imagine how hungry you are after fasting for two days? I am starving to death after two days. I am so, I have never fasted more than three days in my life. I get too hungry. <laughs> I said, Lord, now how am I going to be able to do this? Because when I started fa fasting, or went early on in my life, started fasting, I was, always, I was so thin already. It's, oh my goodness gracious! There was, it was, there was no fat. There was at, I, zero fat, and um, I was very thin. I said, Lord, how are we going to do this and still live? <laughs> so the Lord gave me a plan. He said, just fast two days, eat a day, fast two days, eat a day, fast two days, eat a day. So I did that for a number of years. And it worked very effectively. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I, I, discovered, I discovered a better way than fasting. I discovered a better way. Getting filled with the Holy Ghost. I go, whoa, this is much better, Papa. This is much more effective. Much more, much more is accomplished. Just being filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brumamana, nice to pay. Now, we, Ann and I, we get to fast. We get to fast when we go overseas. And 
somebody said, hey, do you like boiled eggs? They, they heard that they were going to go, somebody was going to go with us <laughs> overseas. And they said, did you, do you like boiled eggs? Because that's all pastors eating. Boiled eggs. No, I also eat rice. Boiled eggs and rice, perfect diet. Never been sick, praise God. <laughs> and everybody's happy because there's plenty of that to feed us. I pray today that you decide that you're going to fast from everything that belongs to sin and iniquity, everything that belongs to the pointing of the finger of the accusation, the participation with any powers of darkness from this day forward in the name of Jesus, that that would be your fast. I pray that, pray in Jesus' name that from this day forward, Isaiah 58 would be the fast that you choose. Some of you, I look at some of you, and you can afford to fast. You've got stores that you could fast for a half a year. <laughs> I've seen some people in the body of Christ that I just think, man, they could just, they could set a new record for fasting if they should put this up. See, <laughs> 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 so the fact that it is, dear people, the Lord doesn't tell you to continually fast. Because you'd die. But he does tell you to continually be filled with the Spirit. And the only thing that you want to learn from in fasting is how not to do your own will, how to have authority over your will. And when you get that across, then I mean, goodness, there's time to move on to the next thing. Hallelujah. Uh, bro, the Lord doesn't need our sacrifice so that he can come and do something. He needs somebody who takes a hold of the, this kind of faith that comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, the sword of the, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit. The shield of faith by which you're able to quench every violence, every fiery dart of the wicked one. The sword of the sword of the spirit. With all prayer and supplication in the Holy Ghost. Of course, the sword of the spirit is what? The word that's in your mouth. The word of God that's in your mouth. Mm. To overcome with the word of your testimony. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, they put swords on the Bible. It's not really what the Lord's talking about. It's the sword of the Spirit. It's the word in your heart coming out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Of course, it says it's in the same agreement with that word in the Bible. But it's not like, I'm going to put the Bible on you and the devil's got to go. I'm going to lay the Bible on you. And as soon as I lay the Bible on you, the power of the darkness is going to go out of you. And so you're dealing with the power of the darkness. He's not threatened by that, honestly. It's the word that's in your mouth. It's the word that's in your mouth that binds him. Is the word that is in your mouth executed by the authority that is only present by the working of the Holy Ghost? Right now, I can tell I want to help you with this. Do you understand this? The only thing that holds you back and the more that God has for you are the things that you allow Satan to run interference against you with. The Lord knows exactly what it is. Some of it he allows ministers around you to be able to see so that we can pray. Because usually he doesn't allow us to tell. Because if you can't hear it from him, you won't hear it from anyone. If you can't receive it from him, you won't be able to understand it. So we just pray. All you got to do is ask the Lord to show you. God, what's in the way? What's hindering me? What's keeping me back from going on into the authority and the blessings and the purposes that you have for me? He'll show you. Getting real with God, getting serious with the things of the Spirit. Little <laughs> Sakina 
Hirusham Lokataya. Um Brushi Bekani ni Petula Tira. Irmanai. I'm not going to keep you late. Of course, I said that the other night and it was already 10 30. I'm only, I'm only going to stay as long as the Spirit of the Lord is pleased. Because if He doesn't speak through me, I can't say anything. It's true, I'm a stutterer. I can't, I'm a babbler. I can't say anything. I just love the anointing. I love His presence where He speaks His word to us. Hallelujah. Oh, He gives glory and gives honor. Ah, he wants to fill your mouth with the sword of the Spirit. You know, Jesus, with the sword of his mouth, hallelujah, will destroy all the armies of hell and destroy all the armies that men would ultimately uh, be able to raise in their ranks, that hell would be able to raise against him with the sword of his mouth. And he put the same sword in my mouth, too. He put his word in my mouth. He put his word in our mouth. Oh, but it's not, it's not going to be activated until you'll be filled with the Spirit. And when you're filled with the Spirit, shouts going to come from you. Shouts going to come from you that's going to scare you. You didn't know that was in you. You're going to go, where did that come from? That is, wow, that is amazing. You can feel it. It can be felt long, it can be felt distances away. Uh, Romans 13, 12. This is for you and me. God's talking to us. He's talking to the church. He says the night is far spent. He says the day is at hand. The day is at hand. It's right now. This is the day of the Lord. This is the time. This is the strategic moment. This is the opportunity to strike. Not to hide in the caves, behind the rocks and in the dens for fear. Strike. We're going to stand here and we faithfully going to command this mountain? <laughs> Rodney said to me today, he says, so how's it going? I said, well, I'm standing here and I'm telling the mountain to be made a plane and I'm not going to shut up. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 I am certain of the things which God has said he will do. And so I'll stand here and declare these wonderful acts of the living God. Psalms 105, and Lord Dan and declare his mighty works. Sing a song unto the Lord, declare his mighty deeds. Hallelujah. That's what we're going to do. Father's, Father's working at work, he's moving you into a realm. A divine power and authority to shake nations. To bind strong men, um, to bind kings, to bind those, uh, those powers that have tried to take authority over the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that are in a realm of darkness, that are in a, a satanic realm. And Jesus Christ, who's head over all powers, who's head over all principalities and authorities, has sent us to declare what he has to say about what they can and cannot do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People think that San Diego belongs to me. South, Southern California is mine. It's true. It's true. And I said, oh, it's not. Look at you. This, this is the man talking. He's mine. It's really truly is. It's mine. The Lord gave it to me. The Lord gave it to me. And so I stand here in this place and in this position doing what he told me to do. And, and everybody else, see you later. Anybody else, see you later. See you later, what's going to happen. Hallelujah. 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 And is anybody else the ones come participate along with this holy and divine purpose that Christ Jesus has given to us to execute in his stead, yes. to, doing it, to doing it his way so that a glorious church might be seen in the earth? <laughs> hey, hey. The night is over. It's spent. 
spent. Spent. It's like me getting up at 6.30 and my grandmother saying, the day is half over. What, are you sick? You sleeping at 6.30, Grandma? The day's over. She's a farmer, you know. The day's half over. What, are you sick? My goodness, great. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. <laughs> Let us cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of light. There's an armor. I got an armor, you see. I got an armor that I put on. It is the it is authority It is the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost. It's to be baptized every day, to be strengthened every day in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. You don't need to be strengthened in the Lord in the power of his might on Sundays only. Uh, you need to be strong in the Lord, strengthened in the Lord and the power of his might on Mondays especially. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, how many of how many, how many of you? I'm sorry, I'm a little drunk. How many of you have noticed that certain certain temptations and 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 and, and, um, and attacks of Satan come at certain times in the week and in the month? How many of you ever recognize that? If you can recognize it for what it is and fall on your face and begin to make intercession for the church, you will all of a sudden become a key player in the kingdom of God. You will have taken your part. You will not be stupid no more. <laughs> Who gets tossed about through all, with every trick of Satan. Now you've got the number. You know exactly what's going on. You think it's all about yourself and all about some you know, thing you're going through. It's Satan's attack. You're going, to get, you're going to be smarter tonight. You're going to wake up. Night's over. Hey, why are you sick or something? Day's half over. Get up. <laughs> My grandmother had it in her mind, all the work I was going to be doing outside. She had already accounted for every minute, minute of daylight for me. And I had spent probably at least 45 minutes of it. Papa has, has accounted for every moment of daylight for you and me. There's a lot to do. There's a lot of souls that weigh in the balance. There's a lot of things Satan's getting away with that he has no right to do. There's a lot of iniquity and sin and sickness and disease he's putting on the people of God. He has no right to do it. He has no right to in any way stop us for one second. I want to see some of you get fighting mad tonight. I want to see some of you get fighting mad tonight. I want to see some of you get resourced by the power of God tonight to be able to stand against all the powers of darkness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8. God says, but let us who are of the day, that's me and you. We not of the night, we of the day. Let us put on the breastplate of faith. And love. And for a helmet. The hope of salvation. Somebody says, how, how do I do that? How, how does that work? These are the things that the Holy Spirit immediately gives to us and brings to us as we're overwhelmed by His presence and that we understand exactly what we're supposed to be doing. I know my life is supposed to be given to walking in faith and love. I know that doubt, unbelief, is an enemy of the kingdom of God. It's an enemy of the things that God wants to do. It's not going to work. It's not going to work.
not going to be in my life. It's not going to be in your life. In Jesus' name, I want everybody to stand with me. Let's just understand right now that the Spirit of the Lord fills every person in this place, that every one of you are the temple of the living God, that every one of you have been equipped with all the fullness of God and been given the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. That's a lot of firepower in this place. That's a lot of divine ability in this place. You're going to have to recognize the things that Satan has been stumbling you up with and tricking you with is taking away your boldness and taking away your confidence and taking away your certainty. You're going to have to understand that that's your chief enemy and that's the first head you need to take. Huh? We want to see you come in here next Sunday sporting a head. The book that, that Tim did on giants is a very good book to read to understand. He's talking from first-hand experience of having to deal with things that kept him back from being whom God has called him to be to ultimately rise to the place of great authority that God has given him. Everyone, every single person has to go through the same trials, has to go through the same opposition, Everybody's guaranteed to win if we just simply obey God and do it His way. Are you looking for a career? Are you wondering what you're going to do with your life? What do you see yourself being? What do you see yourself doing? Is it a heavenly vision or an earthly one? Tonight, get rid of the earthly one. Trash it. Get yourself a heavenly one. Set your course for heaven. Set your course for me. Set your course. Set your course. Set your course tonight. Set your course. Set your course. Spirit of the Spirit of the Lord is here. Spirit of the Living God is here. Emily, come here. Come here. Now just come right up here. You guys coming in and off the platform, just walk right up, walk right, right down. It makes a whole lot of distract, less distraction than walking all around, sneaking out the back, coming up front. <laughs> just come down. I mean, just not gonna, this is an act two of part three. <laughs> <laughs> Scene four or whatever. Hallelujah. <laughs> As long as you let things run over top of you, they're going to run over top of you. As long as you're looking for other answers to deal with problems, I'm telling you, you're not going to, those problems aren't going to be fixed. It's time to start calling what God said is done. Finish. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, this, the Spirit of the Lord is especially addressing, addressing you, Emily. You go ahead and start playing. Hopefully it's not the percussions. <laughs> she strikes a chord and we hear the cymbal and the hi-hat. <laughs> Emily. Emily. Father is talking to you. Listen, listen to me. I'm telling you, I'm talking to you right out of heaven. There is no sickness. There is no device. There's no weapon. There's no disease. There's nothing within the realms of humanity and within the realms of, of the physical framework of your body or of your life. 
that it has power to overthrow what God has said. Huh. He, he who has promised will also do it. <laughs> and then it's for you too. The enemy will lie to you and tell you you got cancer. He'll tell you, he'll tell you every disease you're willing to believe that you got it. Or that you're gonna get it shortly. <laughs> you're gonna have to just you're gonna have to say that enough of it. Enough. Satan has no hold on me. I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm a son of God to maturity. Ha! I'm seated in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Sickness and disease, it can't bother me. Crushed its head at Calvary. I'm a no she tied. A lot of Show Kenaya. I'm Roma Baya. Ah, Burmamosa. Ah, Ah, for by his stripes I'm healed, you see. <laughs> I'm a seated in heavenly places. Somebody said, well, so-and-so died of sickness. and Those people over there, they got it. What makes you think you're not? I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm not living by the word of man. I'm not living by the models of men. I'm not living by the experiences of men. I'm living by the faith which God has given to me. I'm living by a, I'm living by a divine decree. I'm living out a divine mandate. I'm living out a divine decree. I said you're living out a divine decree. I said. You must live out. You cannot afford to lose out on this divine decree. No power can stop the man or the woman, the boy or the girl who set their heart to do the will of the Father. And that's all they want. They don't want anything else. I tell you, I'm more hungry for the things of the Spirit. I'm more thirsty and desirous for a moving of God, for a revival and increase of the anointing that melts the hardest heart more than I've ever been in my entire life. And His Father that gives such hunger and such hunger will be greater in my life this time next month, this time next year. Should the Lord tarry, is coming. I want heaven now. I want Jesus now. I want all the things that He has purposed now. The blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, the oppressed go free. Every eye behold and every eye now see. So, lift your voice. So, the Saturday, Ramaman, I got a little so the yellow bayera. So, the Makisha, the Lolo, so far, Rimamangori. Say, the Lolo Mangori, see that in every day. Almighty God, your glory now. Sati ayale 
Yabo Sayataya Boko Sayataya Loma Masabiataya Suturi Cassetaya Lobo Cosa Esabo Yoloma Mananjata Sadia Sopo Boyanaya Sayator Rimombo So Saya Sataya Lobo Cosho Bopayama Saya Lobo Sato Yorumaya Saya Brave Payaloman Jebra Boy Frisia Mamma, <laughs> Yes, Father, we thank you for the anointing that breaks the yoke. We thank you for the mighty moving of your spirit. We thank you for the faith, O oh God, for signs, wonders, and miracles. We thank you, Father, for the authority to break off every power of darkness to bind the strong men, to let the oppressed go free. Mamma Mande, Soda Mandel, Sadie Mande, Nate. Get a Mamma Mande, get a Mamma Mandala, get a Mandela, let it she break, and a Mamma Mandela. Yena na manda la 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 be si pre ma manda ve la ki arona non do pina na manda ek. Every thought brought into captivity, every imagination, every idea, every plan brought into the authority of those things which Jesus Christ himself is thinking. Everything brought into that place of obedience to the will and mind of the Father. You just listen to me. You listen to me, people of the abiding place. Satan said he'd stop you. He don't have a snowball's chance in hell. I'll just tell you right now. <laughs> I'm going to just tell you right now. Ah. God, by his own power and might and strength and authority, will do these things which he has spoken. <laughs> Every person in this place, you step into the gift and call of God upon your life without delay. Recognizing the tools and the weapons that Satan would use against you with fear and intimidation. The recognizing how the enemy would try to come and lie against the truth and distract you and use things about the circumstance around you to try to manipulate. Don't regard it anymore. Don't respond to his lies anymore. It's very easy when you accept and willing to believe 
that your life has come to an end, you no longer live unto yourself. Then all those things that Satan would try to attack you with about yourself become ineffective. Because now you live the life of Christ for you to live as Jesus. See, Jesus, he's manifested in my mortal body. He's manifested in my mortal body with the spirit of the Son, with his love for Father. He's manifested in our mortal bodies right now. Christ Jesus lives. He separated us for the single purpose of revealing his Son in us, and Christ Jesus is revealed today. Let that wonderful gift of life that God has given you, this gift of life, God's own life, the eternal life. People think that eternal life is an object. No, it's not. It's Jesus. John said in 1 John, For the life was manifested and we have seen that eternal life which was with the Father and revealed unto us. And he was speaking of Jesus. The very life of God. This is where we're going to live. I encourage you, I believe, it's something like a little over 200 times the phrase eternal life is found in the New Testament. Go spend some time gazing on the life that God has given you this week. Go spend some time gazing on the gift of God. Hallelujah. 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 Rejoicing in that which the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Rejoicing in every good thing. Spend your life like this. As the Lord says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord and call upon his name. Live your life like this. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing songs unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. This is the life to live. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them that seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord. Seek his strength. Seek it forevermore. <laughs> Remember his marvelous works. Remember all that he has done for you. Remember the wonders of his judgment, the wonders of his mouth. Just think on these things. <laughs> Just lift your hands towards heaven and let the power of God fill you right now. Let the power of God fill you right now. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled. Oh, sorry. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled, my 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 name, my name. Be filled, my 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 name, my name, my name, my name, my name, my name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, say a triumph. Be filled, my God, show to me by here, y'all. Be filled, my, 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 my name. Be filled, my, my, my name. Be filled, my, my, my day, my, my, my day. Be filled, my, 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 my name, my own. <laughs> be filled, my 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 name. Be filled, my 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 name. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. 
Be filled, be filled, be filled. Be filled, be filled, be filled. Be filled, be filled. Amen. Be filled, be filled, be filled. Zerri mama mandero. Zerri mama beleo mama ya. Bere bebe gina mambolo mama ne ne na. Bi bere bebe bebe mama mama mambo ya. Bi bala beri mambolo mambo ne 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 ma ne. Si bere mambala bo. Si bere bebe bebe. Ta. Be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled. Speak to yourself in psalms and hymns. Speak to yourself in spiritual songs. Sing, make melody. Sing, make melody. Sing, make melody. Sing, make melody. <laughs> Sing, make melody. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Sing, make melody. Hallelujah! <laughs> Sing, make melody. Ha 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 Sing, make melody. <laughs> Sing, make melody. Sing, make melody. Sing, make melody. <laughs> Sing, make melody. <laughs> sing, 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 make melody. Sing, sing. Talk of all his wondrous works. Talk of all his judgments. <laughs> Sing, make melody. Sing, 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 sing. Sing, 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 sing. Sing, make melody. Sing, 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 sing. Sing, make melody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sing, make melody. Sing, sing, Brahma, Mama, the Gregory, Mama, 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 Mama,
if God be for you, then who can be against you? <laughs> and if we could really take a hold of this, if God be for you, who can be against you? <laughs> every circumstance that you go through, every situation that you go through, when you choose to follow God, when you choose to do what's right, there is no loss. It is only gain. It is only gain that God gives you. God makes you stronger through it. He teaches you how to trust Him more, how to walk relying only on Him. If God be for you, who can be against you? If God be for you, who can be against you? If God be for you, who can be against you? There is nothing. There is nothing that you give to God that has gone unnoticed. There is nothing that you give to God that Satan is ever able to steal from you. It is only a gain. It is only more. It is only increase. If we would recognize that if we have, we really have nothing to lose. We have, we have nothing in this life without Jesus. So why not just with full abandonment, give it all. Why even think of what your voice sounds like? Because it's for God. It's for God. Why not take the risk that you have nothing to lose? You have nothing to lose. It's only to gain when you're looking to God. When you're looking to God, it's only gain. If God be for you, who can be against you? <laughs> Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I ask you that your people's eyes be open tonight, that they can take a hold of this trust, this reliance, this full abandonment to you, oh God, that we no longer live our, live our lives for ourselves, but every opportunity, we seize that opportunity, whether it means our job's on the line, we still pray for those people, we still speak out the name of Jesus, we go, we conquer, we take every terror that we can, every opportunity that we can, we engage in the fight, we engage in the battle, because oh God, you are our God, and if you be for us, who can be against us? Sing, 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 sing. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled, be filled with the Spirit. Mama, mama, there it is. Go to my mandosa. Go to my mamaleke. Go to my mamabri babobri. Ha 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 